Hi, my name is Kara and I knit pretty fast. So today I'm going to give you all the tips that I can think of to knit quickly since a lot of people have been asking me like, Kara, how do you finish projects so quickly? And like, Kara, like what style of knitting do you do? And I am here to answer all the questions that you didn't ask because I just wrote a list on my phone of tips that I can think of. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'll also turn this into a video of like just tips that I have picked up with knitting as well, just because why not? So my very first tip is to look up continental knitting. So that is a style of knitting that I do. So the way that you probably learned how to knit is English style, which is when you take the two needles, you insert your right needle into the stitch and you take your right hand off the needle and wrap your yarn around and then pull that new yarn stitch through the loop and over and that's how you make a new stitch and that is english style of knitting it's comfy it's classic i haven't done it in a very long time um but that is probably the way that you learned how to knit because that's just probably the easiest way to go about knitting when you're first starting the way that i knit is called continental style of knitting you hold the working yarn in your left hand and you kind of like have some tension with it so that you insert your needle and then you catch the new yarn over and then pull it through and it'll make more sense when i show you the video and so that is how i knit quickly because you're not actually taking your hand off the needle to wrap the yarn around your hands are always on the needles and so you're going to be knitting a lot more quickly and you definitely need to figure out your style with this one it takes a lot of practice and doing the knit stitches is a lot easier than doing the purl stitches so i actually don't do continental purling i do i think norwegian purling and this is just what i learned on youtube from like two years ago and so i find that continental purling or sorry norwegian purling is a lot more difficult than continental knitting and i still struggle with my tension a little bit um but this is definitely my biggest tip on how to knit quickly is to look up continental knitting and if you're not super confident with knitting yet i recommend just sticking with english style of knitting first get really comfortable with english style of knitting and just knitting and getting your tension right and just not dropping or increasing stitches because trying to add in this new technique and trying to add extra hand movements like just just don't add extra stress to your life learn how to knit first before you even try to knit faster Finish one project before you try to learn how to knit more projects quickly. A tip with continental knitting and just getting used to it is that I find that it's really useful to get all the stitches like bunched up on the left needle and ready to go for continental knitting. So you'll often see me in like my knitting videos or just like knitting in general is you'll see me like gathering all the stitches on the left needle first before I even like get the yarn ready and like start going. Another thing that I like to do is I like to knit with circular needles. And I think circular needles are way, way, way better than like regular straight needles because I think that they're a lot easier to maneuver. Like there's a lot less wood to like hold. And like when I try to use like big, like straight needles, like I find it a lot harder to maneuver. And especially with continental knitting, like I recommend trying it out with circular needles because it's a lot easier to move the shorter sticks than it is to like maneuver like the foot long sticks. So. If you're finding that you're struggling trying to do continental knitting with straight needles, I recommend trying it out with some circular needles because they're easier to move and they're a lot more versatile. Maybe I'll just convert you guys all into using circular needles. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. You can knit in the round on circular needles and you can knit flat with circular needles, but you can only knit like flat with straight needles. And that is my biggest argument for knitting with circular needles. And another big tip that I have is to look up the magic loop method because I have a bunch of circular noodles and some of them are interchangeable so I can like change out the cord lengths and stuff but a lot of them aren't because I have gotten lazy and even with the interchangeable ones like I almost never change the cord just because I have a lot of knitting needles and also I'm just a little bit lazy so what I'll do instead is I'll have like a 32 inch or 24 inch like cord for all of my knitting needles like that's the length that I really like to have for all my knitting projects and I'll just use the magic loop method. And so that's when you take the right needle and you just pull it through and you just like gather a bunch of the extra cord and you just create like an extra loop. And like when you start knitting around and you'll eventually get back to that loop and you just like readjust and it'll help you like keep all your stitches nice and gathered and make it really easy for continental knitting or just even any knitting in general. So look up the magic loop method. It'll change your life and it'll make it so that you have like say 32 inch like length cord circular knitting needles but you can still knit like necklines and arm ribbing and stuff like 
it's life-changing and basically that's like the only way that I have ever used those circular needles like I actually find that having like a like 16 inch or like a 10 inch cord between my knitting needles is too tight because it's just like not enough room to maneuver so what I like to do instead is to use like 24 inch cord and just use the magic loop method instead because you can move your needles around a lot more easily. Another tip that I have to recommend is that even though I have been knitting like continental style and Norwegian purling for like almost two years now, I find that it's kind of exhausting or like it gets a little bit tiring when you're doing a bunch of continental purling because it's just like a lot more movement for my wrist personally. I don't really know why. So I find that like when there's long stretches of like all pearls when I'm working with super bulky yarn, I actually switch back to English style. And that's just to kind of give myself a break. And I actually find that with purling, I am, and with purling super bulky yarn, I'm just as fast, if not faster, doing English style purling than I am doing Norwegian style purling. And yeah, these are just kind of things that I've picked up about myself. You might be faster at doing like English style knitting or even like flicking or something than you are at Continental. And it just totally depends on how comfortable you are with your needles and just like, what movements you've practiced. Okay, the next step that I have for you is if you're trying to practice and learn continental knitting, do not do it with super bulky yarn. It is a lot more difficult to maneuver and you'll get frustrated and then you'll think that you can't do it or your wrist will get tired. Like you kind of just need to build up the muscles. So I actually recommend trying it out with like Erin to bulky weight yarn because it's easier to maneuver the needles and the yarn's a lot more forgiving. I would actually recommend also doing it with like a slightly stretchier style yarn. Like don't do it with mohair. Mohair has no stretch and you'll, you'll get tired of knitting. It's not that fun. But like say something like Wool in the Gang, Al Pacino Merino. Every time I switch from using like a full mohair, like even like a chunky mohair, like three strands of mohair, whatever. If I switch from working with mohair to working with like Al Pacino Merino, I go, why would I ever work with mohair? It is so nice and like comfortable to knit with. And this might not make any sense to you because I'm literally talking about like knitting, but once you try it, you'll see. Like there's a lot more stretch and it's just like very pleasant to work with continental style, like bulky weight yarn. Yeah, like you'll see videos of me like knitting anywhere and everywhere. And like, you'll see that like, I can knit really fast when I'm working in the round because it's all knit stitches and like the only reason I pause is just to like regather the stitches and kind of put them all together on the edge again. And that's with bulky weight yarn. So speaking of which, I really recommend just getting used to and practicing continental knitting. Continental purling, sorry, Norwegian purling is a whole different story and I think that the best way to practice that is to do ribbing. And basically the reason why I looked up how to knit faster and how to do like continental style knitting and Norwegian purling is because I was getting really tired of doing one by one ribbing. And like with one by one ribbing, if you're doing English style, you have to knit with the yarn in the back and then you have to bring the yarn forward and then purl and then put it back and then knit and then bring the yarn forward and purl. And I was getting really tired of doing that. And I was even knitting with like super bulky weight yarn at the time, but I was like, this is too much. Like I need to do something faster. And so I actually found that doing a knit and then a purl, and that's, that's how I learned how to do this style of knitting is I started out with one by one ribbing, which I don't recommend actually starting out and practicing that way. I recommend doing like all knits first and then doing all purls first. So even just like knitting flats, you're doing the knits and then the purl rows, like, that's a great way to practice. I don't recommend trying out this knitting technique with like one by one ribbing, maybe two by two ribbing, but not one by one ribbing because that's exhausting. I think that it's a lot easier to pick up continental knitting than it is to pick up this style of Norwegian purling. And I haven't looked up continental purling, but I feel like at this point I'm kind of set in my ways, so I might just do Norwegian purling forever. I recommend trying to do a top down sweater. So just do something entirely seamless and that's like, entirely knits just so that you get used to continental knitting and you just get used to the motion and like getting the tension right with your pinky and stuff like try it out also i th this is part of the reason why i absolutely love knitting top down sweaters is because it's all knit stitches and it will literally fly off your needles because the pearl sides or like the pearl rolls will always always slow me down no matter what no matter how many sweaters i have knit the pearl side or the pearl rows will always slow me down. So when I knit a top down sweater, I'm like not dreading anything. Like I will literally just knit the entire thing and be like, this is great. It's all knitting. Or it's like only increase rows versus like just a regular knit rows. Like it's amazing. 
And like when I'm knitting something flat, I will literally like have to challenge myself of like, when I'm about to put the project down, I go, Kara, do not leave yourself doing a pro row at the beginning because you will not pick it up again. Make sure that you're finishing on a pro row so that you start with the knit row when you pick it back up. And that is something that I've had to hold myself to. And that's just kind of like good hygiene, good knitting hygiene, I guess, for myself. And just know yourself, basically. Maybe you like pearl rows. I really haven't met a knitter that likes doing pearls, but maybe you're out there. Another tip for continental knitting is just to get your tension right when you're holding the yarn. Don't hold it too tight because that'll make your stitches come out too tight and it'll make it a lot more difficult to maneuver the stitches. And don't hold it too loose because then you kind of drop the yarn and it's not that fast to knit continental style. So I have a certain strategy to how I like to keep tension with the yarn and what I do is I like to take the tail of the yarn and I wrap my pinky once and then hold it up with my index finger of my left hand. And that's just how I've done it. I know that there's a bunch of different ways that you can hold the yarn and there's even like some devices to help you keep the tension right. But you'll figure it out on your own and if this feels uncomfortable for you, try out different ways. But this is just what has worked for me and hopefully it'll work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, there are a ton of other ways that you can hold the yarn and keep tension correctly. Okay, this one's kind of silly, but it's definitely true. Um, try not to watch TV shows or movies that have subtitles because if you need to be reading those subtitles, you're not really gonna be looking at your stitches. And if you're not looking at your stitches, you're gonna be making mistakes, especially if you're just starting out. Like I have been telling my family for the past two to three years, like ever since I started knitting, like when we're trying to figure out TV shows or movies to watch together, I always go, can't watch anything with subtitles, sorry. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that I don't put on captions or like subtitles just to read them, even if it's in English, because like, say when I'm watching a show like Peaky Blinders, if they have an accent, sometimes I'm like, no idea what you just said. So I need the, like, I need the subtitles there. But it's better for like quick glances or like you can look away quickly and stuff and you won't like be missing everything. So definitely watch something that in a language that you understand. I only watched a full movie with like full subtitles after like two years of continental knitting and like full years of like full time knitting all the time. I watched Parasite and my eyes got dry because I was just like staring at the screen and like knitting at the same time. And I just like couldn't move because my concentration was so high. Like I was comprehending what was going on in the movie, but at the same time I was doing like a lace stitch. And I don't know why I did a lace stitch while watching that movie because if anything, like stockinette, just pure stockinette, or even just like a top-down sweater would have been great to start out with like watching a movie with subtitles for the first time in forever. And I did a lace stitch instead. <laughs> okay, something that's not necessarily related to just like the style of knitting, it's more about like the yarn you choose, like knit with big needles. That seems like a no-brainer, but if you want to finish projects quickly, like knit with big needles. Like a project that's done with super bulky yarn or even just on like 15 millimeter needles if you want something a little bit more airy. Like you don't have to always use super bulky yarn with 15 millimeter needles. You can always make like, you can always knit with 15 millimeter needles and smaller weight yarn if you want like a gauzier texture. It won't come out as dense. It won't be as like cozy warm, but maybe that's what you want if it's like spring or summer or even just like a cool pullover. But Knit with big needles. A project knit on 15 millimeter needles could take me like six hours. A project knit on like eight millimeter needles could take me like 10 to 12. And both of those, like, those are very fast projects. One of the reasons why I tend to not knit with like needles that are smaller than like six millimeter, like I have a few projects out there and a few like patterns that are knit on like four and five millimeter needles, but you don't see me knitting those very often. It's because I am kind of an impatient person and I know that I can finish projects quickly on different sets of needles. So if I know that a project will take me like 30 hours and I'm not super excited about it, I will not be knitting it and I will drop it. And there are many projects that I have had where I just have never finished it because it's knit on too small of needles. Don't do that to yourself. If you are really excited about a project and it's sit on smaller needles, go ahead, go for it. Like you'll be very motivated to finish it, but don't be surprised when it takes you like 30 to 40 hours. And that just can't be me. I, I don't know what it is about me. I think it's because like when I start a project on smaller needles, I'll be like working on it and then I'll be like, this is boring. I need to work on something else. And then I'll start a project on like eight or 15 millimeter needles. And that's the end of the story because then that project will, that project on small needles will just go and die in a corner.
Another reason I tend to not knit with like five millimeter needles is because I think my hands have gotten used to like holding bigger needles. When I knit with like three and a half millimeter needles, like my nails dig into my hands too much because the needles are so small and I'm like gripping nothing and it hurts. And I just haven't really perfected my technique to knit with smaller needles. And maybe that's something that I'll do this summer and spring, but definitely not in the winter when things are cold and I need big chunky sweaters. So maybe in the future, not today. Okay, and here's my biggest tip on how to knit quickly. Knit something that you're excited about. Like, even if you're a beginner, you don't have to start out with scarves. I certainly did it when I first started knitting again. Like I started out with a sweater and it was kind of ugly. And my dad said it kind of looked like when people were like training their dogs and like it's like the dog bite padding, like it was weird. And I unraveled it within like a month or two because I was like, I'm never gonna wear this. And like the, the armholes were too tight. And I was like, dang, like, is this what knitting's like? But you know what? I was really excited about that project. And it was knit on like super bulky yarn. And when I first started knitting at like eight or nine, my grandma never used super bulky yarn. So I was like working with like Aaron weight yarn and things took forever. And I kind of just lost enthusiasm and motivation for knitting. But when I first got back into it in like 2020, I was like, ooh, what is this super chunky yarn that I can use? And I got super excited about all these super bulky yarn and I was like obsessed with like wool in the gang. And there's this one video that they have about how to knit a sweater and I didn't have any knitting needles or yarn. I just watched that like full tutorial of like two hours and being like, yeah, like that's how you make a super chunky sweater. And so I got really excited about knitting and I got excited about a super bulky weight project. You don't have to be, get excited about whatever projects you want, but I just happened to get really excited about a project that would take me like no time at all. And it was great for a beginner. And so I don't recommend like trying to make like a beautiful, intricate, elaborate sweater as your first project. Please don't do that. It'll be really difficult. You'll be really confused by all the terminology. Start with like a beginner friendly pattern for sure. But if you're not like super enthused by like what it looks like at the end look around like get inspired by other people's projects like the advertised like sweater is not necessarily how it'll turn out when you make it based on like what yarn you choose and like how you knit it and so like i loved 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 going through like the ravelry projects so if you go on ravelry and you click on a sweater pattern you can click on projects and you can see like what yarns other people chose out and like how they experimented with the yarns how it looked at the end and that's like one of the ways that i learned how to substitute different yarns from the recommended in the pattern like i would go on ravelry and be like hey has anybody used this particular yarn have they let me use this particular yarn and then i would see how it turned out and be like yeah like i do like how it looked and even though it's like a heavier weight yarn like i really like how it looked and so i would try it and that's how i started to kind of get a feel and an instinct for how yarn would look on different types of patterns and even then like i would also be like oh like this yarn that they use is super cool. Like, let me try it too. And so definitely explore, get inspired by other people's projects. Like there are so many cool knitters and cool projects that they've made. And it's not just on Ravelry, it can also be on Instagram. Like it's gonna be on Pinterest. I don't use Pinterest as much, but I know it's there. Yeah, just look around, see what other people have done. And so like, if there's a beginner friendly pattern out there and you're not super like excited about it, there's different versions of it that can get you really excited and just explore and see. Like one of my best motivators has been like yarn and so like I'll buy a yarn and get super excited about it and that'll be like, what's the perfect project for it? And then like that's how I'll finish a sweater in like a day because I just got really excited about the project and I finished it and I put aside all other projects and I just did it. And so if you're not excited about the project that you're working on, you're not going to finish it, especially if like you're a beginner because when you first start knitting, it's going to be hard. It's definitely gonna be hard. But if you're inspired and motivated by what you wanna make, you'll finish the project and it'll get easier. And you'll just get into knitting. And like, this is one of the reasons why I do not like to knit for men. I've realized it's because like, if I can't visualize myself in a sweater and be like, ooh, this is cute, like as I try it on, I don't wanna knit it anymore. And so the sweaters that I've made for like, the men in my life, like, they take me forever because I'm like, eh. I just wouldn't wear it and so I don't want to finish the project and that's bad but at least I know that about myself. So tips for Norwegian purling. I am no expert on it and it is still something that I am working on so I have struggled with my attention with Norwegian purling for a year and a half or so like I'm still struggling with it. 
my knit stitches when i knit entirely in knit stitches it looks a lot prettier than when i have to do knits then purls and that's just something that i've come to terms with but i find that practicing with a thinner weight yarn rather than the super bulky weight yarn that i'm usually working with helps and it'll just help you get used to the tension and getting your tension right and just practicing the movement correctly and just another thing that I, a bit the big tip that i have for norwegian purling at least for me and this is one of the reasons why my stitches came out wonky was that I was holding the yarn too tight and I was making the stitches too tight. Like they, my tension was too high. So loosen up, don't hold your yarn too tight and don't stretch out the stitches too much either because I found that I was like pretty aggressive when I was doing the Norwegian purling and I was stretching out the stitch and that's what caused my stitches to look a little bit wonky. And I'm definitely a better Norwegian purler now but it took practice and it took a little bit of investigating on my part to figure out like why my knitting flat looks so different from me knitting in the round. And those are all the tips that I can think of. If you guys have any other tips, feel free to let me know. I am still learning how to knit. I, again, placed myself at somewhere of like an intermediate knitter. I don't think I'm advanced yet because there are still a ton of techniques that I would like to learn and I need to pick up. But also, if you need any of like credentials for me, I knit 148 pieces in 2022 and like 140 pieces in 2021. I knit a lot and you don't need to knit that much, but I do and I think it's fun <laughs> and I just get ideas in my head and I want to knit them. So yeah, I picked up a few tips on how to knit quickly. Okay, so when you are continental knitting or purling, I recommend doing the first stitch on the row like English style like don't even try to do continental with this because there's nothing to like keep the tension with so I usually just do the first stitch continental style so I'm just gonna purl here and then now your yarn is like attached to the right side and you can create some tension with the left so again this is how I like to get the tension right for the yarn I take my pinky I wrap it around once and then I place it behind my ring finger and my middle finger and over my index and then I create the nice tension here and it's pretty loose grip but it's still able to like the yarn's able to move through but there's still some tension to fix the tension now <laughs> let me just redo that and yeah now I'm going to do Norwegian purling so the way that you do it is you scoop take your right needle and you kind of scoop and you are aiming for this stitch here and this leg on the way you're just going to pick up this yarn so you insert needle through both and notice that the working yarn is over my right needle here but it's inserted into my left or it's inserted into the stitch here and then you're just going to twist and catch the working yarn again and pull it over and so now the working yarn's wrapped over, and then you're just going to pull that stitch through and over. And you're going to take that stitch off the needle. So once again, you are going to scoop, and you're going to pick up the working yarn on the way. Then you are going to twist and wrap your working yarn over the right needle so that it's looped over. And then you're just going to pull that loop through the stitch and pull that stitch off the left needle. And you're just going to continue that. And make sure your needle cord isn't too twisted like mine. It'll make things difficult. So I'll do that at full speed. And I often use like my right hand in order to pull the stitch off the needle so that I don't like pull too much and stretch out the stitch. Cool. And now we're doing the knit stitches. I recommend always doing the first stitch English style because if you're trying to do continental it's a little bit tricky to like when it's all like there's nothing on the right side there's no tension and so I usually do the first stitch English style so that I can have something as like to keep the tension or right, so now the working yarn is attached to the right stitch and I can create like a tension between the two needles and so to hold the yarn what I like to do is I like to take my pinky wrap it once around the working yarn Pull that yarn behind the ring and middle finger and hold it over the index. And so it's loose. I keep a pretty loose grip so you can still move the yarn through, but you're not going to be dropping it and I have to redo that. <laughs> and so now you have the working yarn and there's tension between it between the two stitches. And to do continental knitting, you are just going to insert your needle into the 
stitch of the, uh, the leg of the stitch and you're just going to catch that working yarn slash loop it around and then pull it through. You're going to, once again, insert your needle into the loop, wrap your yarn and pull it through. Once again, you're going to insert your needle, wrap your yarn, pull it through. And so let's do that at full speed. Oops. Sometimes you'll accidentally grab both legs like that. And that's okay. That's just mistakes you make and you can fix that. Yeah. And so here's my English style purling. Another thing that I like to do, especially with English style purling, is I actually like to hold on to the working yarn with my right hand so that I'm not constantly like dropping it and like picking it up again. Yeah, and you can do that with your pearls. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day and happy knitting. See ya.